All right, real quick, uh, this video is probably useless to a lot of people, but for those very fresh, those very new, you know, very timid people uh, going to look at their first car or first old car, you know, because um, again, this guide is for beginners. So for those of you who aren't exactly sure and still kind of timid when looking at one of these cars, that's what this video is about. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to identify them. So this is gonna be short, not as long as the last videos. I'll try to make this quick. You're gonna look at a rabbit and you're not quite sure if something if he's going on and uh, you know, you watch the last two videos and you're still kind of unsure if you're looking at a car that's been, uh, you know, had a front end swap or VIN swap even, because that is, that is somewhat, I, want, I don't want to say common, but it is possible and it does happen. We've seen a few cars getting trying to be sold as 80s or earlier years and it's very obvious that it's a newer late westy car so uh this is just a quick rundown of key things to check if you're thinking something if he's going on or you're still not sure what kind of car you're looking at i don't want to scare you away and have you paranoid thinking every car you're looking at might have a swap in so Please don't, you know, take this with a grain of salt and realize it's not like it's everybody's doing it left and right because it is super illegal. And this is why you uh, might want to avoid and, you know, take the few seconds to check the VIN number when you're looking at a car. Um, you know, if you get caught with a VIN swapped car, you're kind of shit out of luck if the state comes and wants to take that car from you. And uh, if it's done right, I'm not condoning it because, again, it's super illegal. If it's done right, nobody will ever know. Uh, but... You know, if somebody knows what they're looking at and for some reason they cops or insurance companies go looking at your VIN, you can get yourself in a really bad situation. Uh, but anyway, that, sorry to get sidetracked. Um, the reason somebody would swap a VIN is, you know, we see cars for sale without titles all the time. And there are ways to go about getting that title. Some people don't want to do the legwork. They don't want to spend the money or the time waiting to do it the right way and recover the VIN and title the proper way. But... Um, you know the the half-ass way or quick or easier quote-unquote easier way to to go about getting a title for a car without one is taking the vin plates and vin numbers and title from a rotted or crashed car buying that or owning it and swapping it to another car so exactly why there's a bunch of reasons i mean you can fill in the blanks why somebody would need to swap a vin Again, it's not the right way, and I do not condone it in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, you know, it can happen. And you should take the few extra seconds to confirm that the VIN matches the car and the year. And, you know, that's why I made this quick video. Because, again, it's not common, but I have seen... I have seen a few cars. I've seen a handful. You know, I've seen close to close to 10 I'd, I'd probably say about six or six or seven at least different rabbits that were vin swapped and one of which was for sale and very obviously poorly done and poorly listed for sale so don't get yourself in a bad situation with that so the most important thing is the vin number obviously now they're always in the door. They're always supposed to be in the door. I've seen some cars, the VIN number rubs away. The later cars are a little different. I'll uh, show that quick when I get home. Um, but the early cars have a very short VIN. A oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A 10 digit VIN. Um, that applies to all the rabbits all the way up to 1980. 1980 included. There is also a dashboard VIN plate. It's down in the lower corner down here, driver's side corner, down here. Um, but these two aren't that important. I don't want to say not to look at them, but like I said, this sticker can get all messed up and weathered and hard to read. And as you can see, this is just riveted on. And the same thing applies to the late Westy cars. It's just a simple plastic rivet holding that plate on. So, for those not following yet, that VIN plate on the dash can be very easily swapped, and the one on the door can very easily be intentionally destroyed. Real quick, shout out to uh, Mark One Auto House for sending me the wrong map plate over a week ago, still not making things right. Shout out to you guys. I know you're sending me one. 
but uh, this has been a terrible experience so far. So you might be asking, well, Michael, what VIN can I trust then? The third and most important one is under the, under hood. the hood. On all the early rabbits, including the early Westie, so 1975 to 1980, all have a 10 digit VIN number on the shut tower. Um, I don't know if the 1980s in the same spot. And I don't know if the uh, Swallowtails are in a different spot. I don't even know if the Swallowtail has it there. As far as I know, the Swallowtail has it there too. 10 digit VIN. Like I said, running out of light, so I'm sorry you can't see, but it's right there on the shut tower. All right, that should help a little bit. 81 to 84 has it in the rain tray, dead smack in the middle. Um, I don't have a car here with me with it, but there's a flat plate. If you pull up this rain tray, if it doesn't already have a window, chances are the clear window's all foggy and you can't see through it anyways. Um, but if you pull this rain tray up, pull this seal up and ease this rain tray up, you'll see a however many digit, it's way more than 10 digit. I think it's 17 digits or whatever. However many uh, num digits are in the newer VIN numbers. Um, be right smack in the middle across the front of the rain tray. It's a flat piece. Um, and if somebody cut the rain tray out, if this person selling the car cut the rain tray out, kick them right in the nuts. Kick them swiftly and firmly right in the nuts for cutting out the VIN tray. Uh, not VIN tray, uh, cutting out the rain tray. Cause that person is a douchebag. Because, uh, you know, not only does it look terrible when they cut this out and does it, you know, leave your wiper motor all exposed and just ruin all sorts of things. Uh, show cars do it. If it's full-blown show car, kind of understandable. But when it comes time to sell it, you're missing the most important VIN number for an 8184 Rabbit. All right, uh, real quick, this is on my sport truck. Uh, it's 1981. Uh, case in point point in case however the saying goes this is or should we say was the VIN number on the door as you can see it's almost totally gone if this was the only VIN number you had to go by it'd be very questionable using um, very questionable or very sketchy trusting that as the only VIN to identify the car uh, again you got, your, you got your dash plate same spot on the late Westie and again point in case case in point whenever the freaking saying goes i had to swap my dash because my old dash was trashed and obviously i had to swap my VIN plate if the state wants to come after me for restoring my car and swapping the VIN plate properly from the old dash onto the new dash you know come see me bro i don't care i'm restoring my car not committing any crimes back under the hood though uh there's that window i was talking about that doesn't really stand up to the test of time too well but you can see the vin number under there it's stamped into the metal on the rain tray it's very hard to fake that i mean it's not impossible but it's very hard to fake that so that's late westy another thing about the vins these 10 digit 75 to 80 VIN numbers aren't recognized by Carfax. Uh, they're just too short of a number and it's just, they're old. Anytime I've tried to uh, Carfax a 80 or older Rabbit or Volkswagen in general, it doesn't show up. So don't waste your time asking for a Carfax if it's got a short VIN number. Um, I mean, by all means try anyways and see if you could dig up anything. But as far as I know, you can't really get any history on a car that has these short 10 digit VIN numbers. Now, if you just said, hey, wait a second, you're telling me I can't look it up on Carfax, but I need to confirm a VIN number matches the year and all that. Well, how do I go about doing that? If you call up an insurance company, they should still be able to look up that VIN number. And um, if that car has been insured any time in the, in the somewhat recent years you know i don't know how long everything went digital with vin numbers and all that but even though carfax can't tell you the history on a 10 digit vin insurance companies should be able to say yeah we see that as this because it was registered here title was turned in here and we can confirm this year matches that vin number so um do some legwork so you don't get burned. Now, let's say numbers match up because it's not too often you get a missing VIN number car. You're worried about the front end being swapped. 
you want to check, you know, where this front clip attaches, um, where the fender meets on the inside, so down inside of there, where that fender meets the front core support, where the frame horn, this whole piece being the frame horn, where that meets the front, check for any kind of boogery weirdness going on, mismatched paint, um, but also I have seen people attach front clips or front aprons or core supports, whatever you want to call it, all the way as far back as the horn. So, you know, you you kind of got to look all around and see if anybody did anything funky, anything looks out of place. Uh, you know, it's not super important. I mean, you should kind of be able to tell based off the previous video if it's got the right front end or not. But, you know, if you see an 81 to 84 VIN number placement with a round front end, you know something funky's going on. Uh, they could definitely very easily paint the whole car and uh, make it all, you know, hide all the work. And if they went that far, you know, chances are they did a quality job and you're not buying a terrible car. It just comes down to what you want to buy. If you want to buy a totally stock unmolested car, then, you know, that's obviously not what you're looking for. But if you like a round front end and you don't care what year it is, um, just, you know, do yourself a favor and check over the quality of that work. If you're not too familiar with body work, have somebody come with you that's uh, familiar with body work. Because although it is just, a, you know, like I said before, style preferences aside, because we talk a lot of crap about rounds and them being stupid or squares and them being stupid, the whole front of your car is tied together with this front apron. Both frame horns, you can't see it here, it's hidden by the battery, but it looks the same. You got your frame horn that runs there. The whole front end of your car is braced together with this front apron. So, again, it comes down to a safety thing. The long versus short tails. We mentioned briefly in the last video, if a car has long tails on and they switch to these short tails, you're gonna have holes to cover up. So if they didn't go painting the whole car, whatever they chose to do to do that uh, swap, of tails um, they'll have a plate tub over here if you see a plate like a plastic tub covering this whole plate area and it's got small tails uh, you want to look behind that plate whether it's from the inside or if uh, the seller or whoever is okay with you peeling that out or taking it out to see the holes behind it see how they were filled up see if it's all rotted see if it's you know because if it's all rotted it could be leaking water leaking water you could end up with a rotted out spare tire well uh, I know I'm moving fast here so but it's a video you can rewind whatever um, and then vice versa if they're drilling long tails on a short tail car you want to same thing you want to check how that was done if anything's leaking water if it's rotting out I mean you can even see here this isn't rotting uh, so that's a bad example I mean, even down here, there's a little bubble spot. These cars don't need any help rotting away. So, again, we may talk a lot of crap on the Facebook um, page. But at the end of the day, preferences aside and ball busting aside, people do these round front end swaps and these tail light swaps and the dash swaps and whatever have you. They, they half-ass this stuff. And uh, it could ruin a car. So that's the long story short of all of this. The last thing we'll talk about, which we mentioned briefly in the video before, the two different types of dashes. Um, there are also Jetta and Cabrio dashes. Those are different, I believe. I don't know if they're the same between each other, but I know the Jetta has its own dash separate from this. And same thing with the Cabrio. Again, I don't know if the Cabrio and Jetta share the same dash. I just know they don't share the same dash as the Rabbits. So... Um, if your car doesn't have this style dash or the other style dash that we showed in the last video, somebody could have swapped it. If it's not appropriate for the year of the car that the VIN says the car is and the title and the seller says the car has, then somebody obviously messed with that. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think that covers it. I'm trying to keep this video short. If you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, leave it down below in the comments. So for those of you that made it this far and actually watched each one of these videos front to back, thank you so far. Um, the whole series isn't over yet. 
Next, I want to talk about what it takes to daily drive one of these. And I've had quite the interesting past few weeks dealing with this one. So it's a good time to uh, talk about a couple of things and key points while the wounds are still fresh. <laughs> um, no, it's not that bad. It's just, it, it, it could be stressful. We'll talk about what it takes and what you can expect if you are gonna daily drive one of these. And uh, you know, basic things, a couple of basic things about maintenance and whatnot. So that's the next video. Um, and this kind of wraps up the first few videos regarding identifying a rabbit and things to look at when buying one. And you know, kind of getting yourself up to speed with the different years. And so again, for those of you that made it this far, uh, cool, thanks. I appreciate the support, but more so, uh, I'm glad that this might help some of you. I really hope it, it can be put to use. We never had anything like this back in the Vortex days. We might have had a couple of threads going over rust spots. I mean, you could search up stuff like that pretty easily. But we didn't have YouTube and videos back then. Uh, YouTube was just becoming a thing in 05, I think. 2006, 2005. Nobody had any good videos out yet. Nothing, even though this isn't super organized, nobody really had comprehensive uh, front to back crash courses on this stuff. So, all right. Uh, so like I said, next up we'll talk about a little more technical and gritty stuff.